Hello guys, in this video we're going to look at making a laser trip wire using a TI-83 Plus series graphing calculator. So the things you'll need is obviously a calculator, but I say TI-83 Plus series because a TI-83 Plus will work, TI-84 Plus will work, TI-84 Plus Silver Edition will work, and a TI-84 Plus Color Silver Edition will work. A TI-83 Plus Color Edition won't work because they removed the port that's needed to do this. So I'm using a TI-84 Plus. Um, this one will work just fine. You also need a link cable. This is used to link two calculators together to like transfer files and stuff. You need a breadboard and some breadboard wire, breadboard wire, a AAA battery, a uh, NPN bipolar junction transistor, which mine is a 2N3904. Um, you will need a photoresistor, a normal resistor. I recommend having a bunch of different kinds of resistors. But I specifically have a 300 ohm resistor, which seems to work. You'll need a some wire tape, a, a laser pointer, and some breadboard wire. So in in a prior video, we learned that you can read an input into the calculator by by making a direct connection from the tip or the ring on the end of the TRS cable to the ground. So this is the end of our TRS cable. If you uh, Remember, this is our link cable, so you have one end of the link cable plugged into the calculator, and this is the other end of the link cable. So uh, it's divided into three segments, the tip, the ring, and the ground, and some volt. Uh, uh, these top, top two are both voltage sources, and this is a ground. So if you connect the tip directly to the ground, that's an input. If you connect the uh, ring directly to the ground, that's an input. So in the diagram on the right, we separate the direct connection with buttons. So as you can see, it's directly connected to the ground, but there's a button in the middle of the uh, in the connection. This allows you to input data into the calculator by pressing one or both buttons, and the calculator can tell what you press. So while I'm holding down this button, it'll be making a direct connection, and the calculator can tell that. And if I'm holding down this button, it'll be making a direct connection, and the calculator can tell that if I'm doing both or neither. So it can tell which one of the two buttons I press, or both. An NPN bipolar junction transistor can be used instead of a button. A transistor, like a button, is a switch. It can be pushed down or not pushed down. However, transistors are not physical switches, but are like electrical switches, allowing current to flow from the collector, this is the C part, to the emitter, which is the E part when a current is applied to the base, this middle part. So when you apply a current to heat the base, it's like um, pressing the button down. And so um, anything flowing into C will flow out of E. But if you're not, if no current's flowing to the base, or not enough, um, it, won't, it won't let anything through. It's like the button's not being pressed down. We can use a transistor to input binary data into the calculator electronically. So I say binary meaning a 0 or a 1, true or false. So here we separate one of the inputs using an NPN transistor. So here I have the tip is directly connected to the ground, but there's a transistor in the way. Um, the calculator will be able to read when a, calcul when a current is applied to the base of the transistor from another source. So if a current is applied here, um, it will, the calculator will be able to read there's an input. Um, you can think of that as reading a 1, and if there's no current, it won't read an input, so you can think of that as a 0. So I'm specifically using the 2N3904 transistor. A photoresistor is a resistor which decreases resistance as more light hits it. A decrease in resistance is the same as an increase in current. This means the current is proportional to the amount of light hitting the photoresistor. So the more light that hits it, the greater the uh, the greater the current. So this is the uh, oh, kind of what a photoresistor looks like, and that's the symbol for it. So this is a little problem, the ambient light problem. A certain amount of current is needed to activate a transistor. Let's say that the amount of current flowing into the transistor's base is C. Let us also say that the amount of light hitting the photoresistor is L. So C needs to hit a certain threshold for it to activate the transistor and for the calculator to recognize it. So C, our current, has to hit a certain threshold. It has to be a um, certain value. The amount 
As the amount of light increases, the resistance decreases, which in turn increases the current by Ohm's law. So as R goes down, if V is a constant, then I must go up. This means the amount of light is proportional to the current flowing to the transistor, or C. So C is proportional to L. So as I increase L, C is going to increase. But that's actually a problem, because this means that the value of C depends solely on L. So the amount of current depends solely on the amount of light. But what if the threshold of our transistor is so low that simple ambient light produces enough current um, to activate the transistor? So if the C value, the threshold it needs to hit for it to be able to activate the transistor and for the calculator to be able to recognize it is really, really low, then just a little bit of light, just the ambient light from the room, will uh, will um, be enough for your calculator to detect an input. But we don't want it just to be the ambient light. We want it to be the laser pointer's light. Um, but currently, we have a problem where the ambient light could basically have the same effect as the laser pointer. We can solve this by adding a constant. Let's call it R. This constant will be a resistor connected to the photoresistor. The, the value of this resistor, R, is negatively proportional to the current. So now we get this new equation where C is proportional to the inverse of L plus R and the inverse of all of this. This constant R can be adjusted to shift our C value up or down. Increasing R decreases the C value. So as we increase L, we increase the C value. But as we increase R, we decrease the C value. So this means that if our threshold is too low, we can increase R, which in turn decreases C, thus increases our threshold. So if let's say C needs to be at 50, if we decrease C, or if a threshold's 50, uh, this is just a random number, let's say a threshold's 50, if we, we always add to our C, let's say negative 10, then if my C is 50 minus 10, that's 40, so I haven't hit my threshold yet. yet. So essentially by adding a resistor, I will need more light to get C high enough to hit the threshold. So all I've done here is added a resistor to my photoresistor. So that means that if our threshold is too low, we can increase R, which in turn decreases C, and thus increases the threshold. So we just add this R here, which you can use to adjust our threshold. To solve the ambient light problem, we must shift the threshold high enough so that the ambient light is not, not enough to hit the threshold, but the light from the laser pointer is. This can be measured and calculated. However, I found it easier just to switch out different value resistors until I found one which worked. My 300 ohm resistor seems to work for my transistor. You might want to play around with different um, resistors if it doesn't seem to work for you. So basically, you just change this R value out until you find um, a resistor that will uh, it it will it will filter out the ambient light. So just a little bit of light won't activate the transistor, but the light from your laser pointer, which is a lot of light at once, will. So uh, you need a voltage source. This setup requires a small voltage source separate from the calculator. I'm using a AAA battery as a 1.5 volt source. Ideally, this battery would also power your laser. However, in this setup, my laser and the AAA battery are different sources. So I simply taped two wires to my AAA battery to use this as a, my voltage source. So here's just a AAA battery, and I've taped two wires to it. So that's just very simple. There are actually things you could buy to put your battery in that have wires coming off of it. But this is why uh, it's useful to have wire tape so you can um, just tape this without needing to buy anything else. And also the, uh, the um, link cable, you're going to need to use wire tape to tape two wires to that as well. And this is the symbol for the voltage source. So it's 1.5 volts, it's a little circle with a plus and a minus for the positive and negative side of the battery. The positive side is the one with the bump on it. The negative side is the flat side. So here's my schematic. So here you have the calculator. Um, so this is the, your link cable plugged into your calculator, but you have another end of your link cable. 
and I have, as you can see, I have the tip is directly connected to my ground, the sleeve, but it's separated by this transistor. Now I have my uh, battery, my 1.5 volt source, with a resistor, with a photoresistor that's going into the base of the transistor. And you have to connect the two grounds. So the ground of the uh, battery circuit is this negative right here, and then the ground of the calculator is the uh, sleeve. So as you can see, the ground here is connected to this ground. Um, the two grounds, the negative end of the AAA battery and the G and D must be connected. R1 can be adjusted to filter out ambient light. So you can change out this uh, resistor. So here's my actual setup. Um, I used a small breadboard in order to accomplish this. This is my little breadboard here. The AAA battery um, positive end is plugged into the voltage rail. That's the uh, rail on the breadboard that's red. Oops. And my uh, the negative end is plugged into the ground rail. That's the blue rail. The G and D of the calculator, the ground or the sleeve, is is also connected to the ground rail. So as you can see, I have the link cable plugged into here, and the other end of the link cable, I have wire tape over it because I've taped these blue and red wire. The red one is connected to the tip of the uh, cable and the blue one is connected to the sleeve. So the um, here's a zoom up of the breadboard section. As you can see, here's my resistor, my my photoresistor, and my transistor. And this is the VCC. This is coming from the tip of the calculator's uh, the TRS cable. The base of the transistor, the middle pin right there is um connected to the ground is connected to the ground rail by a resistor and a photoresistor uh that that's a typo it's connected to the power rail so here's the power rail and there's a photoresistor and then that's connected to this resistor which is then connected into the middle pin of the transistor and um the calculator's vcc is plugged into the collector of the transistor and the emitter is connected into the ground. So uh, here we have the VCC from the tip of the calculator is plugged into the collector and then the emitter is plugged right into ground. So here's a TI basic code for uh, something that would just tell you if the wire is tripped or not. So all it does is loop forever until um, It'll just loop forever until you press a key, and it will say trip true if the wire is tripped, and it'll say trip false if the wire isn't tripped. And this requires the program PRGMN. If you don't have this, go back and watch my tutorial on um, how this works. So here I have a short video demonstration. So as you can see, it's kind of hard to see, but on the calculator it says tripped true. And here's my little setup, and here are my photoresistor is actually bent facing this way. So what I'm going to do is I want to take my little laser pointer and I want to point it at the photoresistor. So as you can, it's still kind of hard to see, but here it says tripped false now. And as I put my hand through it, it's going to change from false to true, from false to true, from false to true. So that's how you make a basic trip wire on the TI-83 Plus series graphing calculator.